Uh, just super proud of the guys. They really battled. I mean, that's a, that's a great team, UNC Wilmington, and we've been talking about that we want to be a great team. We've been a good team, and we've played all the top teams in the league right to the end, and we just haven't been able to finish. Uh, today, we, we were able to do that. Um, and it was because uh, guys made some tremendous plays. So really happy for the guys. They deserved it and uh, really worked hard for it. Dennis Corbin, Newsday. How important do you think it was for your group to get a positive result, considering that like you said you, you got so close and too many games so far? Yeah, I mean, the one I, I left the team with this message today. It was the last thing I said to them. Um, we've won eight games by single figures. But because we lost a couple in a row, it was like, oh, you guys, we can't win a close one. No, we've been winning close ones all year. We've won eight games by single figures. I mean, we're not blowing people out. So our record is now eight and six, I think, in single figure games. It might be eight and five. But it's eight and six or eight and five. That's a heck of a record. Uh, just unfortunately against Charleston, we didn't quite get to the wire. And, and um, you know, same thing with, uh, with whatever the Hofstra game. But the, the bottom line is we're good enough to close the games. You saw that, and, um, and we've done it against other teams, but we needed to do it against the top team. And in my opinion, if Wilmington's not the best team in the league, they're right there with whoever you want to argue is the best team. So that was a big confidence booster, I think, for our players uh, to, to get it done. But, um, but I, I, you know, I, we haven't struggled with confidence and belief because, like I said, we've won a lot of close games over the course of the year. Talk about, you know, obviously the win over Mata Meth last week, but I'm uh, sorry, not last week, but last game, but just making it, you know, kind of back to back tonight, a big comeback win. What do you think that really does for the team, obviously, in terms of, I know you just mentioned you don't really lack confidence, but just, you know, motivation, what's the uh, power for the rest of the season? Yeah, you know, I, I think the guys that we have, um, well, I don't think this. I know this. And we've had a lot of really great human beings that have been in our program. It's the highest character locker room that I've ever been a part of in 25 years. We have a 3.22 team GPA. It's the highest GPA in the history of the school. Our guys go to class. They do what they're supposed to do. They work hard. They have good attitudes. They accept coaching. Um, and, and we got two great examples of it here. I mean, they don't – they. Nobody likes it when you get criticized or jumped on, but they're able to just internalize it and turn the page and respond from it, and that's what great players do. Bad players get sensitive and worry about what the coach said to them, and you never spin out of it at that point. So, um, you know, I, I, I just I have a lot of belief in our guys, and I think that from a team perspective, you need to experience a win like this to feel good about yourself. But, I mean, we've had good moments in um, – you know, we really have. I mean, we're 11 and 10, and we played uh, four or whatever, four Power 5 teams on the, on the road in the non-league. So, um, you know, those games all count, but it's not like we played an easy schedule. So I, I, I like our group. I think the guys believe, and they have believed. But it was nice for the fans. Great crowd, great crowd. The crowd was awesome. It was a factor in the game, and appreciate that, too. Yeah, uh, maybe before we get to talking about the two guys who are sitting here next to I wanted to ask you a little about the about Keen performance. I know you got a lot of, you know, contributions all over. 15 points, and I think on top of that, you know, I've been here a couple times now covering this team. It just seems like he really brings the energy, you know, even when he's on the bench, he's barking out, you know, defensive, you know, just kind of telling the guys what to do, really just bringing the energy. I mean, you saw it on the court tonight, and he was swatting the ball out of the way, and just trying to get the guys going to, to really leave this comeback. Just what does that really mean to this program, to kind of have a guy like that who's bringing it to the end of the day now? Well, also yeah, Fitz, Fitz always brings it. Um, I think he would admit that sometimes he's not sure what he's bringing, but uh, but he has a lot of juice and um, he's he bounces off the walls and uh, he's got a nice uh, you know when he's in a good place he really really gets a lot done because uh, he can make hook shot right hand left hand he catches every pass he doesn't bobble catches he can make free throws so he, he you know he's hit a, hit a three tonight like Fitz is a, he's a good good player and um, and he was he was sharp tonight and we needed it like I said I mean we needed all all these plays like in overtime we dominated overtime but the whole game was back forth back forth back forth and um, you know I thought he was really stable for us throughout the whole game how important was his presence in terms of kind of rim protection as the game went on yeah it was it was huge I mean we couldn't guard him in man very well and that's why we played so much zone and our zone was really good because it was active the guards up top were quick and fast getting in and out of gaps and the wings um, you know Tyler Dre Snowdy Chris Mido and Jared Fry those guys were able to get to shooters take away three and bounce back corner and then they just threw it in the high post and played one on one 
we couldn't stop White with a head of steam, but when we could get him just corralled up over a lot of size, you know, he was nine for 28. Now, what's interesting about that is Ken Palm, Ken Pomeroy's website that every coach in the country uses for analytics, coming into today, he's the most efficient player in our league. He's the number one ranked efficient player. So he hasn't had any nine for 28. So obviously, Fitz did a tremendous job of rim protection. So did Chris Mido. But the guards and wings being able to make those catches a little farther out with their activity helped also. Team was able to make a bunch of big stops in the end of the second half and then go into overtime. So how are you able to get the team to rally in clutch and get the overtime victory? Yeah, you know, honestly, the team rallies itself. I mean, like, best teams in the country, best teams you ever have are, are player-driven. And um, our, our huddles, I, I walked into a couple huddles and just let guys go, whether it was Tyler, AC, both of them, Dean Knoll, uh, Chris Mido. Uh, we have guys, they're saying all the right stuff, they know what they need to do. And I, I think they're, they were challenging each other to make some slides and some plays defensively and on offense. So it was... It was as healthy a, a huddles as you could have, and honestly, I, I you, you could have subbed me out for the, uh, you know, uh, the, the one of the water boys. It wouldn't have mattered. The, the guys were on it tonight. And then early into the second half, the UNCW were able to get real hot shooting from three, but in the first half, you were able to limit UNCW and get into the rhythm from three. So why do you think UNCW was able to get so successful early? In well, they, they kept finding the, the same guy. I mean, uh, no, number zero there, Jenkins. I mean, he was he finished five for 14, which you would take. But it seemed like he was five for five because he made hard ones, cutting off screens and stuff. So uh, overall, of course, of the game, we guarded him really well. He hit him in bunches. He went three in a row. Um, and they were mostly in man and in zone. He, he had a little harder time finding gaps. And that was, like I said earlier, the guards and the wings activity. Aaron Tyler, for you guys, I know you kind of faced this morning tonight, you know, 22, 21 respectively, but when you have, you know, so many teammates who are contributing, obviously, we mentioned Keenan at 15, but, you know, Dean with 10, you know, Chris with uh, 8 as well, you know, how much confidence does that give you guys, and what kind of platform does that kind of provide to go out there, maybe in the second half, and you know, do what you guys did and kind of put the ball in the bucket? Um, <clears throat> it gives us a lot of confidence that we know that. Um, whether one of us is not going, I know Ty wasn't really going early, and then in the second half I wasn't going too early, but I mean, that's when we were able to find Keenan and Jared in the first half, and Chris and Dean, like you said, Dean hit a huge three today. So, I mean, it gives us a lot of confidence to know that if, if we're not getting it going at the moment, and we can find our way, but our teammates can help us with that too. So. Yeah, exactly what Aaron said, um, you know, just staying confident really, you know, just have fun with it. Um, I feel like, you know, certain games weren't won because Aaron and I probably weren't hitting at the same time, you know, boost up. It was good to have a game like this, Aaron and I providing, and, you know, it's all because of our teammates, the way they brought energy, and just knowing that, you know, we're, you know, keeping intact with the score with them and we're not even going off yet. It's just, it's just a confidence booster because, you know, the ball's going to fall. That's what great players do. And, Coach, maybe just for you, I know, you know, yeah, it was just the zone stuff. You know, he got he got some shots blocked, and I don't know. You know, it's always hard um, the stats because those things are happening so fast. So I don't know how many of his shots were tipped, but it was really, you know, the guards and wings activity getting him to catch it a little higher on in the high post, and then. A lot of length for him to shoot over. And like any time, there's, there's no different than um, when we played Hofstra. And I think we were five for 22 from three. And we got beat. And we went to Delaware, and we were three for 19 from three. I can show you film where we got guys wide open on extra pass, and shots just didn't go in. Some of it is he just didn't make some shots. He's a great player. So a little bit of it was him having an off night. And hopefully, we impacted it um, you know, a lot. I, I think we impacted it some, for sure, around the basket. But he's, he's, a, he's a really good player. Well, so Tyler, as a team, you guys were able to eat up in the clutch. So why do you think the team was able to rally together and just come together and make a bunch of clutch time shots uh, the game? I would honestly say just defense. I mean, we were finally getting rebounds after the first shot, and we were just, you know, just going, just staying confident. But I'll say defensively, like, we, we, we locked in on defense. And, you know, kudos to Chris and obviously, um, and obviously Keenan. They, you know, contained, they contained White, made him take some tough shots. He felt the presence of their length. And, 
you know, we were able to rotate at the right time and just, just re we just rebounded. That was it. And then Aaron, you're also able to knock down some clutch shots and a bunch of shots to help the team out so when you come and get the victory. So how were you able to get it done offensively? I don't know. I think just staying aggressive and knowing when and like time and score or when to when to be aggressive and when not to be aggressive. I mean, I feel like down the stretch we also got like a lot of good shots like as a team in general. So I mean we just all try to stay confident and step up and knock them in.